Hello and welcome to the India Hangout. Infosys has sent legal notices to three newspapers, Times of India, Economic Times, part of the same family, and the Financial Express, asking them to withdraw from the digital media to carry corrigendum cor cor and apologize for writing articles which were seen as detrimental to, detrimental to the company and its image. Now, there is a big bill. Uh, it's about 2,000 crores in damages from uh, these uh, three publications. There's already been a response. Bennett Coleman, the owner of Times of India and the Economic Times, has said that they stand by their stories. They are factual, balanced, and fully substantiated by courts, says uh, Bennett Coleman, and nothing to be defensive about, uh, said the company's legal head. Now, this obviously raises several larger questions, which some of which have been discussed and some of which have not been discussed. One is, why is Infosys filing this uh, suit? And I'm joined now by three people who will help me decipher that. Uh, Ashok Bhattacharya, editor of Business Standard, the newspaper, uh, and uh, Business Standard has uh, a story yesterday, which says, sorry, this morning, which says, Media Darling Infosys Fights Bad Press. Now, the headline itself should give you a sense on how uh, Infosys has been viewed and perhaps how it will not be viewed. It will not be viewed in coming days. I'm also joined by Anand Rangaswamy, of, uh, uh, the editor of Storyboard, the, uh, the news magazine on uh, television channel CNBC. He's uh, written an article where he says that by suing uh, the media, in some ways, the toothpaste is out of uh, uh, the tube, and therefore this fundamentally alters the equations uh, between Infosys and the rest of media, presumably. I'm also uh, finally uh, joined by Paranjoy Guha Thakuta, who himself a recipient of uh, legal notices on his book, Gas Wars, uh, by both Reliance factions uh, in uh, obviously a clear case where uh, an independent uh, journalist, an you know, investigative journalist, has been to some extent subject to intimidation by corporate India. So these are three different interesting angles. So let's understand uh, the larger issues here. Uh, uh, AKB, Ashok Bhattacharya, let me begin with you. Uh, has something fundamentally changed? Uh, you know, this relationship has lasted, as I can see, almost 15 years, uh, where uh, Infosys has been treated in some ways, the words in your own newspaper, as a media darling or as a darling. And now uh, the equation seems to have shifted around. Why is this? Right. So that,
Right. Okay. I'm going to uh, uh, circle back in a moment, uh, AKB. Uh, let me come to you, uh, Anand. What's your sense? I mean, I know you're, you've talked about this uh, case as something where uh, the toothpaste being out of the tube, which means that fundamentally uh, the, the bonhomme which existed between Infosys and uh, the rest of media has uh, is not going to obviously be the same anymore. So what's the premise for your uh, stating facts from this perspective? Uh, that's not what I meant by the toothpaste is coming with you. <laughs> I meant that now it is over, then it's not going to stop. You know, uh, both uh, uh, emphasis and the two newspapers, at this moment the very problem newspapers, are in a position where they can't go back on their public statements. Now they have to necessarily go to court. Neither can afford to back down. And to me, it's, there's a larger issue, uh, uh, Govind, it's not just about emphasis in the media, I think we're going to see a lot more defamation suits. You know, I think the bonhomie has been for too long. Uh, media has been complicit. So have uh, corporates. And I think now there's no room uh, for these uh, cozy relationships. And uh, there's also no room for irresponsible journalism. Both are there. And this is the new world. I think we're going to see uh, emphasis in the first, but I think we're going to see more corporates Hitting back at media, media, uh, you know, speculates without you know facts to back them, or there are grey areas that they cross. I think we're going to see a lot more of this. Uh, uh, that's a that's a very uh, ominous uh, uh, statement as well in some ways, and we we'll, let's discuss that too. Uh, Paranjay, let me come to you. Uh, you know, the, is the Infosys uh, uh, legal case in some ways to you symptomatic? of a larger, uh, I don't know whether it's problems or, an, or a change in environment and the relationship between big companies and media? Uh, first, Govind, I could not hear what my friend A.K. Patacharya and what Anand Rangaswamy said. Uh, the line has been very poor, so I might end up saying more or less what they said. So you'll have to excuse me for that. But, you know, uh, I think corporate entities and those who head these prominent corporate entities, uh, their skin has become a little too thin in my opinion. You know, there is something, if your facts are wrong, then you should go ahead and send a letter to the concerned publication or the, the other, any kind of media outlet saying you've got your facts wrong. When it comes to opinions, and there is a certain amount of speculation, whether a will leave the company or B will leave the company and, and let's admit one point, Infosys has by and large got very, very favorable media coverage. Mr. Narayan Murthy and Infosys by and large the media has been very, very uh, kind and uh, you know, I mean uh, he, he, uh, his PR, uh, his corporate communications department couldn't have done a better job. Now that after Mr. Naran Murthy comes back to head the company and there is a spate of resignations and there are a whole lot of issues, it's inevitable that a high profile company like Infosys, the journalists would be writing about, you know, and there would be inevitably a certain amount of speculation. Now, you could argue from the point of view of the company that this is bad for the morale of the employees because they're not sure whether their boss is going to be there tomorrow or day after. But I think at the end of the day, you, I think the, uh, the uh, corporates or those who head corporates have to realize that you know when you talk about reasonable restrictions on freedom of expression, Article 192 of the Constitution of India, here you're talking about deliberate intent to malign. And I don't think the media has done that. I think the media uh, might have got, a, got it a little bit wrong here and there. You know, you kind of speculate and sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong. But I don't think there was any deliberate attempt to malign the image of a company or, or the image of an institution. So I think uh, uh, Infosys needs to be far more charitable towards uh, what the media writes. And I, I think it's bound to happen that, that there would be sometimes you get it a little right and sometimes you get it a little wrong. I mean, why? I mean, why are they trying to intimidate large publications like uh, you know Times of India and Economic Times and and Financial Express? I mean, by serving this kind of a legal notice, it it, it, it basically seeks to intimidate.
date, not only these publications, you want to send out a message to others, you want to have a chilling effect on others that look, you also don't mess around with us because if you do anything that we don't approve, we are going to send you a legal notice and even <laughs> if we don't go to court, you'll have to reply, we'll make your life miserable, you'll have to spend your time, you'll have to spend your money in replying to us. So all of this I think is bad, it is a bad precedent that has been set. Is, uh, uh, Paranjay, is this also forcing media to become more responsible because you now you know that uh, you know, you go wrong and you misquote or you uh, write stuff which could be defamatory, you could have a legal notice and not just let's say a correction that has to be published either in your newspaper or carried on your TV channel. Sure, I agree that the media should be responsible, journalists they should do their due diligence, they should do their fact checking, they should try and get the other side of the story all the time. But you know, uh, journalists also work to short deadlines. If, if telephone calls are not returned, if email messages are not replied to, then, then they should specify, they should specifically say, yes, we tried to contact A, B, or C, and we didn't get a response. So I think journalists also need to be transparent and accountable in the way they gather information. And yes, they need to be responsible. I have no, uh, I have no disagreement on that score. Yeah, uh, AKB, let me ask you a slightly trick question here. Uh, so you've also obviously been carrying a lot of uh, reports on Infosys. Now you've not been sued, uh, or uh, you've not been served a legal notice. So that's why that is that does that mean that you were doing something right, or that uh, Infosys does not want to uh, you know obviously uh, make a point with you? AKB, let me ask you a question which uh, in with some uh, which sort of I mean trying to elicit an answer which is a little more in historical perspective. Now this is the first time that uh, Infosys is filing such a, such a case. Now th there could be many reasons for this but is it also because uh, there is a certain disenchantment with the way media itself has uh, begun to evolve or has evolved or maybe the ownership of media has changed and therefore you know the, the institution itself cannot be now trusted perhaps the way it was a decade ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I think India uh, has uh, not always been very responsible in case of South India has, uh, has a lot to blame itself for not giving it correctly on many issues. Uh, the due diligence norms uh, are not followed uh, very often in, in many of the papers. Uh, so I think if somebody has not gone to court earlier, Right. So essentially it is uh, that uh, companies have become more uh, 
uncertain about their rights and they feel that uh, the media of opposition is more responsible, uh, which is in a sense it's not a bad idea. Right. Right. So, uh, Anant, if I can uh, uh, come to you on this, uh, is, is, what's your sense? Is that, you know, serving a legal notice in itself sends a signal? Uh, you know, obviously the judicial system is not exactly, I mean, looking at some past uh, defamation cases uh, and substantial ones at that, none of them have actually uh, come to a logical conclusion where, let's say, uh, uh, damages have changed hands or money has changed hands. So, is the is the is it signal or is it intent? I mean, is it the intent to actually uh, make someone pay for the damage caused? Well, if it does not go to court, then another it takes a long time to settle in court. Then you know cases like this can one way or the other, it's good for those who are written about and good for those who write both. Right. Uh, Paranjay, so a lot of comments coming in, uh, mostly saying that you know if you're a high-profile company, uh, high-profile in media, then you better be prepared for uh, things going wrong and the negative coverage, exactly as AKB has been saying. Uh, it also says uh, there's a comment which here which says that uh, uh, interesting point. It takes me to back to the Satyam episode. I remember media gushing over Ramalinga Raju, and like Infosys, they were made into demigods. Uh, which is, a, I mean, there's no further suggestion about what could happen to Infosys, but this is a larger point about the way media treats uh, people. So, uh, uh, Paranjay, is this, uh, do you think that this had to be done by an Infosys in this case, so as to ensure that there was some order once again, because a lot of things had slipped into disorder, so to speak? You know, the media always exaggerates. The old saying is that, you know, you wouldn't be a journalist if you didn't exaggerate. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the same Harshad Mehta, he was lionized, he was made out to be a big bull and the greatest guy on earth, and then he was the, the biggest villain. The same story was repeated in the case of Ramalinga Raju. You know, so typically, you know, media lionizes individuals and then brings them down. But in the case of Infosys, I, I, I think uh, they are protesting a little too much. Because by and large, the media has been very, very favorable, and, and, and I cannot think of any too many negative stories written about in coaches. So I, I think that's the first point I wanted to make. The second point is to respond to what Mr. Anand was saying. I think it's about time defamation was decriminalized. It should be made a civil offense, as it is in many, many parts of the world. Secondly, you know, when you put this huge figure, 2,000 crore, 1,000 crore, <laughs> it, it kind of intimidates people. But, but if you have to move court, that's a different story altogether. You know, barring courts like the Kolkata High Court where you have a flat fee of 50,000 rupees, many courts, if you actually say that somebody has defamed you for 100 crore, then you have to cough up 10% of that amount and deposit it in the court. So it's one thing to serve a legal notice uh, sent by lawyers, which have a very, very threatening tone. The idea is to intimidate, the idea is to have a chilling effect on others, and it's quite a separate story to be taken to court. You know, so I, I can speak for my own example. Over the last 10 years, I've been the proud recipient of a series of legal notices from various individuals in, and, and companies, including the Sahara Group, both factions of the Reliance Group, Bennett Coleman Company Limited. The same story has got repeated over and over again. You send them a reply, after that nothing happens. Sometimes 
no to make your life miserable. Then they move court and they move court to an obscure place. Take the case of what happened to Mr. Pony Tail. And he, he, he sued a caravan magazine in Silcha. You know, I mean, th those are, I, I think people are now seeing through this game. I think the Supreme Court reversed that particular order. So whereas I agree that journalists need to be responsible, they should check their facts, they should be fair, they should be balanced, every attempt should be made to get all sides of a story. But at the same time, you know, when you are a large company, when you are you, any, anybody who is in the public domain, it could be a politician, it could be a corporate captain, it could be a bureaucrat, it could be anybody. If you are in the public domain, then you know you have to have uh, you have to accept criticism with a certain amount of grace. If, if people are wrong about facts, check their facts. But right. but if they disagree with your opinion or, or their if their interpretation of the facts are different. It doesn't mean you know you come down with a you know you know with, with a hammer, like a, yeah. Kind of breaks and, and and try and you know uh, browbeat that person. And I think that that's also not done. We have right. to have a sense of balance. Right. So uh, AKB, let me ca uh, come to you uh, very quickly. You know, we started by asking the, the the question that you know did Infosys have to sue to be heard? Right. I mean, it's not technically not sue. It's only a serving a legal notice, but. Uh, if one were to uh, take the uh, the non-literal ver version of the word sue, uh, what's the moral of this story, and how do you see this uh, uh, playing out uh, ahead, uh, uh, going ahead, AKB? Okay, I think we've lost AKB. Uh, Anand, let me come back to you. Uh, you know, we were talking. I mean, I think you seem to have taken the position that there's a certain degree of cleaning up which uh, had to happen and perhaps will happen. Uh, you know, uh, Mohandas Pai, uh, former director uh, finance in Infosys, he felt for instance and he tweeted about it and he said he, they should not have done it, it's bad form, right? So somebody is suggesting that basically an, uh, a company should continue to maintain some level of cordial relationships. I mean, that you can uh, manage some of these issues through back channel discussions uh, which all of us do in any case all the time. So, in some ways, as you you're, you two have alluded, by bringing this whole battle out into the open, uh, it's changed the dynamic somewhat. How do you see this going forward, uh, uh, Anand? Uh, first, uh, I'm not sure that they're going to attach the talk. Because that is a presumption in which we need to live one tree. Uh, uh, I, I believe that uh, at least one way to talk is to satisfy the conversation. That is one. Second thing is, uh, like I said, Bowen, I don't think this is only about Infosys and about these TV papers. I think this is going to sort of uh, become a little bigger and uh, all corporates are going to look at uh, this is the problem. I think a lot of the fault lies with media for not publishing college agendums. You know, uh, you, you have a front page accusation and you have a you know a left hand inside page half uh, you know ten column centimeter college agendum. I mean that's got to stop. You know, Paranjoy said, we get some right, we get some wrong. When you get them wrong, I think you've got to be mad about it and, and say you were wrong. But as long as you, you take the high horse and say, you know, this is it, uh, we are always right. You know, any any defamation suit is seen as an attack on the freedom of the press. And that's a crazy situation. You know, why, 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 why are we such holy cows? I mean, we could get it wrong. We could be irresponsible as much as other you know, facets of society are. So, uh, to me, I, I think Infosys is, uh, is angered. I'm not saying that 2,000 points doesn't matter. Because finally the court has to decide whether it's 2,000 or 200 or 2. You know, it's just, just because they've asked for 2,000 does not mean if they win, they get 2,000. 2,000 you know, crores matter is nothing. Yeah, no, I mean 2,000 crores yeah. is either a very large number as we know it or it's uh, it also shows that, uh, you know, inflation has really eaten in and uh, it maybe doesn't, it's not that large a sum anymore. Uh, uh, last words, uh, if I will try and get AKP back, uh, but let me get your last uh, words in. Uh, uh, Paranjoy, uh, what, what's, what lies ahead? I mean, I think, I mean, while uh, obviously we see more and more companies getting assertive and more and more companies uh, uh, taking this extreme step, uh, what's the lesson on the other side for media? Uh, will, uh, if companies indeed get assertive, then what should they be doing? See, I agree with what uh, Anand has said that you, the, the, the retraction 
the corrigendum, if you made a mistake, the correction needs to be given equal prominence as, as the original story. I, I agree entirely with that view, that you, you can't have banner headlines and uh, two days later or one day later when you send it wrong, you tuck away the, the rejoinder or the retraction or the corrigendum in some inside page. So I agree with him entirely that if you've got something wrong, you should be willing to accept your mistake and, and accept that mistake with the same prominence that you gave to the original story. Having said that, uh, I think as far as Infosys is concerned, I'm surprised. I mean, why did it have to wait for Times of India to write six articles and Economic Times to write nine articles and Financial Express to write whatever number of articles before you send them that legal notice? I'm, I'm, I'm quite surprised that it happened in this manner because I mean, when you look, look back, I mean, Look, this company, which is one of the biggest companies of its kind, it's I think the second biggest information technology company in the country, it's going through a period of transition. It's going through a period of restructuring. That There has been a lot of important changes at the top. It's been a somewhat troubled transition. So this is all what, I mean, the media loves this kind of a story because it believes that the readers of newspapers and the viewers of television channels, they want to know about all these things. But, yes, you need to be responsible in the way you report. You have to be clear on where you've been able to get your facts right and where you haven't. But I think uh, Infosys has overreacted and at the end of the day, uh, I, I think corporates need to realize that, yes, they can be very aggressive, but they should be aggressive if the journalists or the media uh, uh, companies or the newspapers have got their facts wrong. And not just because you disagree with a particular point of view or a particular opinion. That's, that's the point I want to make. The right. difference between you know, interpretation of facts and facts themselves. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, Panjoy, uh, thank you very much for that. I think so. We've got three points of uh, view. All of you, I think, seem to feel that uh, media seems to be a, 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 a needs to be a little more accountable in what it does. Uh, I think uh, the feeling is that, it, and companies, on the other hand, too, have are well within their right to file uh, legal notices if they feel aggrieved, as is the case. But of course, it's a much larger legal notice than normally uh, what you might have seen. Uh, we also have to remember that uh, the outcome of such legal notices and defamation uh, suits uh, is not uh, something that ends in actual money being changed. And so obviously, most of them get resolved. So therefore, to that extent, is this a threat of some extent? Uh, and obviously, even if it is a threat, it does work, and which of course brings us to the larger question of intimidation, uh, which we've addressed in some ways. Uh, that's all we have time for on this edition of uh, Hangout. We're going to be back. This is not an issue that's going to go away in a hurry. Remember, Infosys has been a media darling, uh, to use a term that's commonly used now for more than a decade and a half. Uh, things are changing, and they're not going to go away in a hurry. Thanks for watching.